The Holy Tales. Come, I'll tell you a story about a little boy called Eddie. There was a little boy named Eddie who lived with his parents and his older sister. It was Christmas time and time for celebration all around. Celebrations were in full swing in Eddie's house too. The house was decorated beautifully with a variety of delicious food and dessert placed on the table. For seven days since Christmas, Eddie would come and check the presents kept under the huge Christmas tree. He came every day to check if there were any new presents that had been added. He even put the presents in groups according to the names written on the boxes. Then he arranged them together and counted them. On Christmas Day, he saw that his sister had more gifts under the tree than he did. Eddie was very upset. He ran to the kitchen and cried to his mother. Mommy, Kate got more gifts than me. That is not fair. Eddie ran away and locked himself in his room. He sat there the whole time and sulked. He was so upset about someone else getting more gifts than him that he could not even enjoy Christmas. After a couple of hours, his sister came into the room with two big boxes of her presents. She sat next to him and said, Here, Eddie, take all my presents. But don't be upset and spoil Christmas for yourself, please. Eddie was still unhappy. He looked away from her. Do you know what the real joy of Christmas is? The real joy of Christmas is in sharing. So, I am very happy to share my presents with you. Go and share your presents too, and you'll see how happy and joyous you feel. Eddie thought for a while. He picked one of his gifts and ran outside the house. He looked around for a while and saw a little beggar boy sitting under a tree, shivering. Eddie came back inside and took a blanket with him and ran out once again. He wrapped the blanket around the boy and gifted him the present. The little beggar boy was so happy and so was Eddie. He came home running and hugged everyone in his house. Eddie realized the true joy of Christmas lies only in sharing. Eddie went and gave a tight hug to his sister. Then they all sat down at the table together and began with their Christmas dinner. Eddie was very, very happy. So, now you know, children, the true joyous spirit of Christmas is in sharing. Aye, aye, Captain. Come, my fellow people, come with me and let's go and spread some Christmas cheer. Woohoo! <laughs> okay, children. The Holy Tales. First, let me tell you the story. Once, there lived a little girl named Jess. She had a younger brother called William. They used to go to the same school. One day, after coming back home from school, they were very hungry. They wanted to eat something. That morning, their mother had baked a cake. They opened the refrigerator and saw there was just enough left for each one of them to have a slice. William slurped, seeing the piece of cake. He said, Let's have the cake with some milk. I'll slice the cake while you go get us two glasses of milk. Jess happily went to the kitchen to get two glasses of milk for them. William began to slice the cake, but the slices were not equal in size. One was much larger than the other. By now, Jess had come to the table with two glasses of milk. William brought the cake and placed a small slice in front of Jess, and he himself took the larger piece. 
What have you done? You gave me the small slice of the cake and kept the bigger one for yourself? That is so mean! I would have never given you the smaller piece. Instead, I would have taken the smaller piece and given the large piece to you. No! You would have never done that! Of course I would have. I would have thought about you first. William felt bad. He knew he was being selfish. Jess was hungry too, like him. I am sorry, Jess. Here, take some more from me. William cut a piece from his own slice of cake and gave it to Jess. Jess hugged William. They both laughed and began eating their cakes and drank up the milk. So, the moral of the story is that God is good and if He gives us more than what we need, we should share it with those who do not have much. We should never be greedy and keep everything for ourselves. All right. I'm sorry for taking away the larger slice first. That's okay. I'll break some from your slice and give it to Tubby and Freckles so that all three of you get equal amounts of pie. Yes, Holy. Please do that. The Holy Tales Holy! Holy! We're back! Yes! And it's time for you to tell us another story. It's story time! Woohoo! All right, all right. Calm down. I'm definitely going to tell you a story. Today's story is about a woman called Ruth. Um, this name sounds familiar. Yes, it is. Ruth is a very important woman character in the Bible. It is important that you know of her story. Yippee, Holly! Go on with the story and tell us all about Ruth. Okay, so... Ruth is a woman of great importance in the Bible. She is known for her loyalty and she had full faith in God in her heart. Ruth lived in a little village called Maud and she was a young girl when she got married to a man named Mahalon. Mahalon and his family had moved to Maud because their village had been attacked by a major famine. As soon as Mahalon's family reached Maub, he died because of a severe illness and left behind his wife Naomi with two of their children, Malon and Chilion. When Malon grew up, he was married to Ruth while Chilion was married to Oprah. Ten years after they got married, both Malon and Chilion died, leaving behind Naomi, Ruth and Oprah all alone. With no one left alive in her life, Naomi decided to go to Bethlehem. She said to her daughters-in-law, There's no one left in my family anymore apart from the two of you. I have decided to go to Bethlehem. Two of you can leave me and go wherever you want to go. You can go back to your own families if that makes you happy. Hearing this, Oprah decided to go back to her family. She knew if she went to Bethlehem with Naomi, her life would be even more difficult. But to Naomi's surprise, Ruth said, Don't ever ask me to leave. Where you go, I go. Where you stay, I will stay with you. Your friends will be my friends, and your God will be my God. Naomi was happy in her heart of hearts to hear this. The journey to Bethlehem was a long and a difficult one. She couldn't have made it alone. Also, she loved Ruth for her clean and pure heart. So, Oprah left for her home, and Naomi and Ruth left together for Bethlehem to live the rest of their lives. Shortly after arriving, Ruth met a rich land owner in Bethlehem named Boaz. She started working in his field to provide for herself and Naomi. Her dedication and loyalty towards her work really impressed Boaz and he wanted to marry her. Boaz and Ruth soon got married and Naomi was very happy for them. 
and bless them with all her heart. Eventually, Naomi gave birth to a son, and they named him Obed. Obed is the grandfather of David, and thus is named as one of the ancestors of Jesus in the Gospel of Matthew and in the Gospel of Luke. So, this is the story of Ruth, who was faithful not only to God, but also to Naomi when she was all alone. She was a loyal servant of God, and God blessed her for her loyal and faithful virtues. This makes Ruth one of the most remarkable women of the Bible. Wow! That was a wonderful story, Holy. It was so sweet of Ruth not to leave Naomi alone. Yes, that is why she is known to be the most loyal and the most faithful woman in the Bible. Now, it is time for today's question. What was the name of the rich landowner where Ruth began to work? His name was Boaz, and I earned brownie points. Hope you liked the story of Ruth as much as these children did. We'll be back soon. Until next time. Bye-bye. To watch more videos, please subscribe. Hidden plants and trees. On the fourth day, God created the sun to shine in the day, the moon and stars to come out at night. One day, Moses went to Mount Horeb with his sheep. There, God appeared to him as a flame of fire in a bush. Since there was no room anywhere else, they decided to spend the night in a stable. Here, Mary had her baby, Jesus. She wrapped him in a blanket and put him to sleep.